So here's a bit of a, <laughs> a teaser. Um, I had a Skype call with Adam Johnson, who is a recording engineer. <clears throat> and uh, Adam and I first met about two months ago uh, at a place where he lives. And I was invited to take the bowls for a little sound bath in the middle of, of the day by my hairstylist. It was kind of funny. I was kind of in her chair getting haircut. She says, you, are you doing anything in the next hour or two? And I said, no, not really. What do you have in mind? And she said, well... I have uh, a, a friend who's got a birthday today, and I would love to actually gift her with a sound bath. Um, if you're free, just you know, come over and uh, we can play the bowls. So I did. I went home and packed up the bowls and went over there. And, and so in walks this young man, and uh, he's uh, turns out he's a recording engineer, very much into consciousness, and uh, he was just really taken by the bowl. So we've been talking about recording a sound bath ever since. And we just did a, a Skype call today to um, just to speak about this in a little bit more detail. So I'm really excited. Today is June the 9th and we're talking about recording over the course of two evenings sometime between June 23rd and 27th of 2016. So I've been thinking about a theme, a theme for the sound bath. We make a, people have been asking, do you have a CD? Do you have a, any recordings? And the answer is no, but I've been uh, thinking about it and I've been actually developing more of a repertoire, so to speak. Like you know, over the last couple of months, I would say more themes have kind of emerged from playing sound baths. Um, Something else that has occurred to me is just the deeper realization of some of the key concepts that are shared um, by Hazrat Inayat Khan in his really milestone book on sound vibration. Uh, it's titled the, the, the Music of Life. And early on in the book, he talks about the whole concept of capacity. And I want to tell you that uh, as, as a person who's been really keen on self-development for, you know, a good 20, 25 years and reading about the idea of capacity and vibration and rhythm and tone, atmosphere within that beautiful context as it is relayed in the book, The Music of Life, it really has my heart and my soul sing um, contemplating the whole aspect, the whole framework of capacity. Um, these bowls are, truly are um, a metaphor for capacity. I mean, you look into this bowl, and I basically set it up here because I've been thinking of uh, you know, creating an album cover, and I'm thinking of maybe call, calling the CD Access Capacity using sound as key. There is uh, the metaphor for uh, using these bowls for capacity it's just like so beautiful and the idea is that capacity is also as a as a soul you know we have we have a capacity we have a capacity for what we can experience accomplish uh, what we can affect in this lifetime and in another book by Satprem who is very much involved with Sri Aurobindo and the mother in Oroville uh, in his book, I think it's titled uh, Supermanhood, which really refers to the next evolution beyond the level of mind. And it's very much in line with Sri Aurobindo's teaching about uh, you know, emerging towards or evolving towards, is a better word to say, evolving towards supermental intelligence and bliss consciousness, which is the, the next emerging level. Um, the idea that, you know, the whole evolution of you know from from plant to to animal to uh, what we call mind, uh, what really sets humans apart from animals, and I don't mean this in a judgmental way, just in a factual way that you know we have developed this mental capacity. Well, there is another capacity beyond that, and it's the supermental, which really means really um, channeling or being a channel for for the true divine consciousness on this planet. Well. 
the capacity. Um, so in that book, um, Superman with Satprem, he uses a beautiful analogy and he speaks about really our potential, our potentiality and capacity as such, making a reference to the moon. We all know, we, most of us have seen a full moon. So when the moon is eclipsed and we just see a half moon or a quarter moon, we don't really think of the moon just being this little slither, right? We know there is a fullness to it, but we currently don't see it because it has been eclipsed and we know that over time it's going to re-emerge into a full moon and then it's going to disappear. But we know that there always is a full moon. Well, when we relate that concept back to humanity, our human potential, you know, like how many of us are really fully aware about our true full capacity? Most of us are grown up or have grown up and have lived uh, with sort of a conscious or unconscious belief or awareness that, you know, we are what we are, which truly is like using, using the moon analogy as a, as, a, as a celestial body, as a cosmic body, so to speak. Let's call it a cosmic body. A cosmic body that is somewhat eclipsed and that's just how it is and that's what it is, but not thinking that there's actually so much more to it. So capacity, like how to access our true full capacity. This particular bowl in its size and shape, so we have, it's actually a 10 inch bowl, here we go, you know, it has a certain capacity, uh, I don't know what kind of volume of air or water you can fill into this bowl, but there is a certain sound capacity and uh, um, so, but just The certain capacity of sound that you can generate by playing it before it sounds uh, overstimulated. And I don't want to do this right now because it really sounds unpleasant. Um, but maybe that's just the way how we are too. So this bowl can really be symbolic of your capacity. Capacity. It's a container, and a container has boundaries. You know, and as humans, we need to have boundaries. So many people really struggle with the idea of. Or not just with the idea, so many people really struggle with the ability to set healthy, useful, integral boundaries. So a container like this is a really good example for boundaries. So with our body, mind, and spirit, you know, we are a container. We are a container for potentialities. Everybody's uniquely different. There are some boundaries, even like to, I mean, this hand, there's a boundary. What actually gives our body a natural boundary, our physical body a natural boundary, of course, is the skin. Right now, our body can expand to some extent. You know, we can we can gain weight, and you know we can expand, but only to a certain point, I guess, before we were to pop. And I mean, that's an awful idea, but I guess it is possible. It can stretch, but it's not healthy, right? There is a a healthy uh, degree or amount of of substance uh, within us. So the idea of capacity, access capacity, it doesn't really necessarily mean so much physical capacity. I think someone who only has sort of a, a physical reference point, you know, and there are lots of people, you know, especially, well, no, I'm not going to say this, I want to take that back, uh, but there are people, well, people who would be considered a materialist. The materialist really refers to everything as just physical, and so there are people who have predominantly a physically oriented mind. And so they look at themselves as only physical. So the people who say, I only believe what I see, they actually only make sense of life through the sense of the physical body. So the physical body being considered a material object, even though it's, <laughs> it's mostly space, as we know from quantum, from quantum physics nowadays, like you know, this thing that looks so solid and feels solid is actually, what, 99%, 99% empty. Um, Looking at the capacity, the idea of capacity through that concept. Now these bowls, here's something else that I find remarkable. So this particular bowl, um, it's made up of quartz crystal, the purest quartz crystal on the planet. It's 99.92% pure quartz, and then it is infused with 24 karat gold. Well, if you were to think of our body this way, think of our body as being made up of very precious, pure matter. The small amount of matter that we have, what is this if that matter were totally pure and not contaminated whatsoever, no toxins, no chemicals, just pure. Just imagine that. Just imagine how beautifully that body would actually 
radiate or emit sound waves because we do emit sound waves. We are vibrational beings. There's so much to be said and pondered and contemplated and you know, so many insights can be gained from just looking at the word capacity. So my intention with this, and I'm just saying I'm exploring this as, uh, as a theme for the recording, access, capacity, using sound as key. The Hathors, um, uh, as channeled through Tom Kenyon, um, his, his book is a channeled book. The Hathors are an advanced civilization, or advanced, um, an ascended civilization that have been assisting with uh, the evolution of consciousness on this planet for a very long time. In his book, Hathor Material, um, Tom Kenyon speaks about three, or actually the Hathor through him speak about uh, the three keys to changing destiny, the three keys to actually uh, reaching a higher destination. And vibration is really, in a way, the master key of the core key. The three keys are awareness, choice, and vibration. And so, alchemy, quartz crystal, sound vibration as we receive it from these bowls made by crystal tones can really help us to access awareness from a higher level of consciousness and what you just heard there that little noise <laughs> it's actually somebody just texted me so uh, i don't know how to turn that off when i'm recording with my phone um but anyway so that's sort of a bit of a background story for this uh, sound recording that we will be doing with Adam Johnson towards the end of June. Stay tuned.